I want to start this review with an important life lesson. Don't sneak into a sex cult at a creepy old mansion. It didn't work out for Tom Cruise and Eyes Wide Shut, and it's causing the hero at the center of the new game Lust for Darkness all kinds of problems. A big orgy may sound appealing, but it's all fun and games until the knives come out and everybody tries to kill you. Grab your mask and robes because we have a party to crash. This is the story of a man named Jonathan, who, after months of searching, has finally given up hope that his missing wife is still alive. But his life has changed forever when he receives a mysterious letter from what appears to be his late wife. With little more than a vague clue to her whereabouts, Jonathan is lured to an old mansion that is playing host to what appears to be a sex cult. This is just the start of an unforgettable evening filled with puzzles and danger. Lust for Darkness is the not-so-subtle mix between Eyes Wide Shut and Amnesia, with a bit of Lovecraft and H.R. Giger thrown in for good measure. We wander around a creepy but largely generic mansion in hopes of finding Jonathan's wife and escaping before anything bad happens. But I think we're too late for that, because the night takes a wicked turn when the unexplainable starts to happen. As a first-person horror game, Lust for Darkness is pretty straightforward. We spend most of our time exploring a linear path and solving a handful of painfully simple puzzles. From time to time, you'll need to pick up an item, but the object you'll need to use it on is usually only a few steps away. There are also a couple of stealth bits, though they don't last very long. What I'm saying is there's nothing about the gameplay that'll stand out in any way. You're really just here for the roller coaster ride through a scary old mansion. If that's what you're looking for, then you'll probably have a good time getting to the bottom of this mystery. It's short, coming in at just over two hours, but tells a full story with a bunch of fun twists and turns along the way. But as somebody who's played a lot of these first-person horror games, I found myself wanting more. I wished there was more depth to the gameplay or more puzzle solving. I was miffed that the story was so predictable and found myself rolling my eyes at the dumb ending. It sometimes feels like the developers spend so much time modeling completely useless items that you can interact with that they forgot to make a more interesting mansion. You'll occasionally run into an item needed to open up one of the side stories, but almost everything you can interact with is just a pointless tea kettle or pencil sharpener. That's the kind of game that'll let you open up every drawer in the mansion, but there's never anything interesting inside. Well, that's not true. There are a whole lot of sex toys and statues with erections. Actually, that's most of what you find in this game. To be fair, that's one of the few times this game actually shows a personality. There's an incredibly stylish cinema at the start and a few flourishes throughout the mansion that hint at the kind of people that live there, but most of the settings are a bit on the generic side. Even when you start to experience what the sex cult has been keeping secret, you'll quickly get bored of the samey corridors. What's more, the frame rate is never stable and the game has a bad habit of hitching up. The whole thing let me down. While Lust for Darkness manages to provide a few genuinely unnerving moments, I was ultimately disappointed by the straightforward gameplay, simple puzzles, and short runtime. It's the kind of game that starts promising enough, but gradually gets less interesting the more you uncover. The result is a horror game with a few scary scenes that don't add up to much. Hey, thanks for watching our review. So here's the question of the day. What Stanley Kubrick movie would you turn into a video game? Look, I know the people aren't exactly clamoring for a bunch of Stanley Kubrick adaptations, but humor me on this one. I think something like The Shining could work, or maybe Spartacus or 2001. I think I'd go with Rockstar Games Presents A Clockwork Orange, maybe make it a prequel like The Warriors. Anyway, we have a bunch of reviews coming up this week, so do me a favor and click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.